Hello everyone, well, thanks for tuning into today's uh, fur video. We're going to have a look at weather for 10 to 14 days for today's fur video. Day 10 will take us to the 3rd of March. We'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles. Maybe runs around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for um, March itself. And I should get on back for you in a moment. Just say that first video today as I say, UK weather forecast. We've also released JV Friday. Got the ECM WF42. Day for the UK and Ireland coming up for you this evening, and uh, I think we're going to be live at half ten with the uh, pub run. We, I've got spring forecast to do this weekend, so it's a big weekend uh, for Gaz. Well, for Gaz, well, if it's re releasing another uh, forecast, a long range forecast, um, but uh, so that takes up a lot of time. But I think we're going to be right for pub run. I'll confirm on the socials though. This evening, I'll let everybody know. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. I uh, think we need to put on around 45 subscribers to get to 19.6k. So if you could give us a sub, that'd be absolutely awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope you're having a lovely Friday. Right, latest temperature observations from XC Weather. Check this out. 17 degrees flashing away here at Lake and Heath and also at Hull Beach. And Connorsby as well. Really mild, if not warm, afternoon. Uh, other areas are also into the teens. To Western at 13 degrees. Church Lawford at 15 degrees. Got Nottingham, 15 degrees as well. And even in the West, it's very mild where it's pouring with rain. Sandy Bridge at 11 degrees. Cavill Curry at 12 degrees. Jo uh, done out. Done, oh, we'll forget that place. Um, Glasgow at 13 degrees. And uh, Belfast at 11. Go so, mild in the west, but exceptionally mild over in the east from southwesterly winds being drawn up from the Azores. So, check this out. Everyone, this is the latest one from that from EarthNoSchool.net, showing that we are again drawing up. That's a long fetch southwesterly uh, wind. If we drag the map uh, upwards a little bit and see that the air is originating, or the wind direction is ori originating from like the Azores and even from the Canary Islands, wafting up western side of Europe, bring those uh, very mild temperatures. So, what a change on the uh, sort of a week, a week ago when it was being really quite cold with those easterly winds. Um, now it's all changed and uh, we've got spring like temperatures, almost May like temperatures. Unbelievable. But then again, these, uh, these changes do happen at this time of the year. So, from temperature, it's currently sitting at 4.2. That's 0.4 of a degree above the 61 to 99 average. It provisional to uh, yesterday to the 20th of uh, February. Obviously, that's going to rock it up over the next few days with these exceptional, exceptionally mild temperatures. Okay, well, the, the uh, GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensemble for Cardiff for the next couple of weeks is looking uh, like this. The red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Cardiff, starting off above average with the upper air temperatures at the moment. Really very mild, if not quite warm. They're going to come down, though, as we go through the uh, next few days. So into next week, actually, it's going to turn a little bit cooler. Uh, if not colder, and then we go into the first week or so of March, we have a lot of scatter there. Overall, probably averaging out on the milder side with the ensemble members up here, but we have got quite a few ensemble members that are quite cold actually in uh, the week two period. So a lot of uncertainty as we look out into the first week of March. Yeah, lots of scatter. Looks unsettled though, precipitation wise, regular rainfall spikes there, precipitation spikes from beginning to end. Temperature anomaly is for the uh, next five days are coming out uh, significantly above average. If we look at the six to ten day temperature anomaly, then it's slightly above average, but not as much. And the ten to fourteen day temperature anomaly again slightly above average, but not by as much. Precipitation anomalies for the next seven days are wetter than average for more southern and western regions, average or even drier than average in the north for the east. If we look at the uh, 5 to 11 day precipitation anomaly. West average from west of Scotland, near and not a bit drier elsewhere. 9 to 15 day looks like that. I think the, G the GFS 
despite the ensemble graph here looking quite wet, has actually trended a little bit drier uh, today. And there are a few twists and turns currently appearing within the model output that we shall start going through now. So, uh, this is how the latest UK Met Euro run is looking for midnight on Monday. Wet and windy, low pressure driving in from off the Atlantic. Next week turns cooler and showery, and we get to the end of next week, building up a little bit of a ridge from the southwest, so slightly drier, but still a bit on the chilly side with winds coming in from a west to northwesterly direction. As far as we get to the UK Met, this our icon is looking again wet and windy on Monday, and then we go through it's Tuesday and Wednesday, rather showery and a bit cooler. And then we start to build some higher pressure up through the uh, last stages of next week. It's a change on model output recently. You remember the model output recently has been looking very stormy for the first week of March. Lots of wet and windy weather. Today, we're seeing a lot more influence from higher pressure within many of the models. And Icon is indicative of that. Now, where we'll go from that remains to be seen. So it's got very deep load pressure to the south of the... Uh, Greenland there, so it's possible that that would just blast away this attempt at a ridge. It's also possible that that high pressure could start building further northwards and possibly drop in some colder air from the north and from the north east. It's certainly a bit of a turn up for the books, I have to say, some of the model output today. Let's have a look at the KMA, so that's looking rather cool and showering through the early part of uh, next week with those winds in from a westerly direction. Uh, then we go stormy though, so it takes a little while to get there, we do build up a bit of a ridge there towards uh, the end of next week, but very quick that's pushed aside by the stormy conditions, cold and stormy really through the first, um, uh, through the first days of uh, March there, winds eventually by the 5th of March in from the northwest. so that's quite a cold wind direction, and uh, showery with uh, wintry showers in the door, and quite windy. Uh, the GFS Midnight Run, again, looks rather wet and windy uh, from Sunday to Monday. Then we cool and showery through the middle part of uh, next week. More low pressure dries in through the end of next week and into the beginning of March. And that carries on up to and even beyond day 10. Eventually, we uh, end up looking like that. The GFS Midnight Run gets us to the night for March. Low pressure again, driving in from off the Atlantic. Possibly signs of a bit of a mid-Atlantic ridge trying to get going. <coughs> so, sorry, everyone. And then, Mr. GFS 6 then is looking once more rather showering. And a little bit on the cool side for the middle part of uh, next week. Um, we go through to the end of next week and into the first weekend of March, and we start to drop low pressure and the jet stream southwards, and that allows a ridge to build behind it. So some colder air starts coming in with uh, behind this area of low pressure through the first weekend of March, possibly some winchy showers then. And uh, we go into the extended range here with high pressure increasingly influential through the first week of March. It's a big change. Obviously, even on the GFS midnight run uh, with the 6Z here. Uh, and high pressure starting to ridge up towards Scandinavia. And we've actually ended up with Scandinavia high and get wind back into the east again by the 9th of March. So that's a significant change what GFS has been showing. What is going on with the model output today? Lots of twists and turns. <laughs> Well, if you enjoyed the video, please give a like, share, and subscribe. Thanks so much, everyone, for doing that. Why not drop a comment? Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos and content. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gals for Weather Vince and get them to subscribe too. And we thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. 45 subscribers gets us to 19.6k, so if you could give us a sub, that would be absolutely awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay, GM, again, looking rather wet and windy from Sunday into Monday. Then we're cool and showering. Tuesday, Wednesday into Thursday and Friday, higher pressure starts to build. And again, this is a change from the gem, much more in way of high pressure into the first uh, days of March. That's day 10, with a ridge here building from the south up to the north. Could that become a Scandinavian high and get wind back into the east? Possibly, but it's certainly a significant change on what the GM has been showing over recent days for this first week of March. And maybe ECM rounding it all off with plenty of wet and windy weather through the beginning of uh, next week. Maybe rather cool and showery for the second half of next week. 
Bit of an attempt to build a ridge up from the southwest, uh, as we go into the first weekend of March, but overall staying flat and westerly. And the East Yemi sticking with it, it seems to its guns with this uh, very unsettled first week of March. Plenty of low pressure driving in from off the Atlantic, bringing wet, windy conditions. The East Yemi still looking uh, really cyclonic through the first week of March. So the East Yemi hasn't budged on that idea, whereas other models clearly have. This is a precipitation forecast based on the East Chevron from TibetShow.com. So showing rain moving in from uh, the west during the course of today. And that rain will linger in the far southeast corner for a good part of tomorrow, actually. But will eventually get out of the way. And then further wet and windy weather sweeping in from off the Atlantic as we go through Sunday into Monday. Then we're rather cool and showery with further rain pushing through, especially across the south. A second half of next week looks a bit showery as well. And then there's a trend towards something slightly drier as we get into the last stages. For the south, anyway, certainly more rainbow coming in for the north and for the west. And the east, as I say, it's st still seen to its guns this morning, anyway, on the midnight run. Trying to say it might be different, but for the midnight run, the east still sticks to its guns and has the Atlantic onslaught through the first week of the march there. These are the options on the table. Vimy ECM Ensembles today, four day 10, gets us to the uh, 3rd of March. There's, there are many more options, you'll notice, compared to uh, recent days. So let's go through them. 14 members of the ECM Ensembles with lots of low pressure over to the north and bringing in some westerly flow. Uh, 13, again, low pressure to the north and bringing in that westerly flow. 9 with low pressure away to the northwest, high pressure is building to the southwest bow. So that's trying to build up some higher pressure. Increase we can try on the operational run actually. We've got eight with high pressure open to the south. Low pressure is away to the north. Winds coming in from the west. And seven with deep low pressure right over top of the country. In two weeks time, these are the options that we've got. And it gets us to the eighth of March. Seventeen members of the ECM ensembles with low pressure over to the west. Obviously that can be very Unsettled. We've got 12, again, low pressure right over top of the country. 10 with low pressure over site to the east of the country, but, you know, still low pressure dominated. 6, trying to build some high pressure just to our east. Low pressure out to the west. And another 6 with low pressure sort of dropping southwards. And this ridge is attempting to build in behind it. So that's the one that's kind of like the GFS 6 there, uh, I guess, turning things a bit colder through the um, first week of March. Most of the options involve low pressure, I have to say, and Atlantic-driven conditions. So quite what's going on within the model output, I'm unsure, but we shall see what they're showing, uh, you know, uh, over the next few days and keep you updated. This is how March is looking overall from the CFSB2, very Atlantic driven, low pressure to the north, change of colour, high pressure is uh, to the south, and winds coming in from a uh, west southwest direction. So it means that the temperature anomaly during March is above average, and the precipitation anomaly is slightly wetter, especially so to the north and the west. Now, finally, we'll have a look at the stratosphere. So this is the uh, latest GFS stratospheric temperature forecast for 10 HPA over the RT Amador Pole. The blue colours are the gold temperatures at 10 HPA there. It's polar vortex in the stratosphere at its roots. Still well and truly entrenched despite the fact we're into the latter stages of the winter. Well, over the next few days, this is how the uh, latest forecast is looking. Not much of a change, really. Those blue colours with stratospheric polar vortex maintained up to the 1st of March. But beyond that, we do see see signs of a change as we go through the first week of March. Significant warming occurring over Russia and Siberia there and increasingly penetrating towards the North Pole itself. So that looks suspiciously like a sudden stratospheric warming event that we've got going on there. That's the 8th of March with the temperatures lifting up I don't know, something like uh, 50 degrees or so over the North Pole itself. 
I reckon that will probably be enough to send us out a win into a uh, reverse bet if that came off. Certainly come very close to it. Disgraceful event of Strasbourg Polar Vortex. And by the end, possibly hints of a split of the uh, Polar Vortex in the strategy as well. That gets to the 9th of March. Now we've got two loaves of blue beginning to spiral off in opposite direction. One area of blue moving down to North America. Another lot moving down into the Atlantic and Northern Europe. And so I reckon that uh, by that point, you know, by the end of the first week of March, we would probably have the Zoda wing in reverse at uh, 10, 8, 8, 60 degrees north, which would be a technical sudden stratospheric warming event. And uh, a split uh, looks suspiciously like it's about to take place there of a stratospheric polar vortex. So, very interesting GFS run. Of course, it's only one GFS run, and it's extended range. These charts from a stratosphere are as unreliable, you know, as any other forecast uh, chart at uh, 384 hours out. But uh, we have seen consistent signals of this, especially from the ECMWF six weeks um, forecast model. So, if you've been watching Stratwatch over the past few weeks, you'll know... But the ECM is indicating the possibility of an SSW during the second week of March as well. And uh, the GFS operations seem to be picking up on that possibility. But it might be something, it might be nothing. Have to wait and see. And uh, of course, we will keep you updated. Because although we're going to be beyond mid tropical winter uh, by this point, it doesn't mean that we can't get wintry weather. Just as we can get, you know, uh, very warm, even hot weather in September. We can also get very cold weather, or certainly cold weather, wintry weather in uh, March. And particularly for farmers, growers, you know, uh, gardeners, this is uh, quite important um, developments here if we are going to be seeing uh, a cold first half to a spring courtesy of this SSW. Of course, what we don't know is whether. And if we do get an SSW, Sun Stratosphere Warming Event, whether that will have any uh, impact on the troposphere. Because not every SSW has, an, uh, has a troposphere impact. We had a Sun Stratosphere Warming in March, for example, in 2022. And there's no particularly evident uh, troposphere um, uh, impact from that. So, you know, it's just something that we've got to keep an eye on, keep observing it, and uh, see what happens. And we will obviously be keeping you updated of course we will at gav's weather this we always do don't we you always rely on gav <laughs> okay we're done if you enjoyed the video please you like share and subscribe thank you so much for doing that why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos and content don't forget to tell your friends about gav's weather it's getting to subscribe to and thank you so much for doing that so we've got a big weekend coming up at gas weather it's, oh just say but at 7 p.m we're going to be releasing the ECM 42 day forecast and then we'll update everyone about jamie for a little bit later on but a big weekend of content coming up uh this weekend so tomorrow saturday we we'll have a 6 a.m forecast we'll have the second and final seasonal model roundup for spring 2025 getting all the long range models together for the spring see what we're all showing we get forecast and a 10 to 14 day up now, Saturday, then on Sunday, again, we've got 6 m uh, forecast. We've got the Gauss Weather Spring 2025 forecast at 10 a.m. on Sunday. That's going to be an interesting uh, watch. Always an interesting day at Gauss Weather this when we release our long range forecast. We only do four a year. So, you know, always, always a, a fun day. As well as that, we've got um, the uh, Sunday Roundup as well this uh, week. So, I've got the Gauss Weather Sunday Roundup coming up. Uh, Round midday ish on Sunday, and then live at 6 pm on Sunday evening with 10 to 14 days. So, loads to look forward to uh, this uh, this weekend. Lots of content on the way, and uh, you know, keep checking back for more. And I hope you enjoy it all. And I shall see you for either one of those uploads or for the live on Sunday, or possibly with Jamie. With um, what am I talking about? Uh, with uh, with a pub run. What are you doing with a pub run uh, tonight? Uh, right, okay, well, that's it for this video though so uh, we'll end it there enjoy the rest of your friday and bye for now